Legacy of Wisdom is a non-profit project building a vision of best practices for living and fulfilling life's potential. So my name is Walter Link and I will be moderating this day of dialogue. So it will be a free-flowing exchange between the people up on the stadium. And at a certain point uh, in the afternoon, we will also engage uh, in dialogue with you. So the first part of this morning are going to be two uh, different panels separated by a short break. And then we will do, within those uh, dialogues, also moments of practice, because we want to integrate not only, let's say, cognitive exploration of the topic, but also bring in uh, other ways of being in touch with and understanding the topic, because as we know, wisdom is not something that can uh, be achieved only by thinking about it. So this is an important dance between the cognitive and other layers of experience. And uh, at the end of um, the morning, there will also be a practice which you will be doing with each other. And then over lunch, we will also invite you, of course, you're free not to do it, to continue the inquiry among you as you go to lunch. And then after lunch, we will hear your questions and try to respond to that and then integrate you into the dialogue. And then as you heard at four o'clock, we will have Ramdas uh, meet with us. And then after that, there will be a closing uh, circle. And so that's more or less the rundown through the day. I want to also um, suggest that we dedicate this day of practice to Coleman's healing and also to the healing of other people in your lives that are suffering. And to the suffering that you yourselves might be experiencing and to the much suffering that's in the world, which is such an important pathway to becoming more human, to becoming more compassionate, becoming more wise. So with this, I would like to move to those wonderful presenters that we have here today, who I think represent a lot of humanity, a lot of wisdom and start with you, Roshi. And what we uh, agreed is that we would all uh, do introductions ourselves rather than you know, read a list of achievements. So, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> which, uh, as you can imagine on this panel, is very long. Um, so, um, Roshi, you know, as we spoke about yesterday, it would be great if you could introduce yourself in the context of the core theme of this day, which is the question, what is wisdom? How do we cultivate wisdom? How do we live it individually? And how do we live it collectively? So within that frame, whatever you can share with us as an introduction would be wonderful to hear. I want to express a lot of gratitude to you, Walter, and to uh, Jay and Tom. Tom's an old friend of mine. So happy to see you again. For um, the work that they have done in magnetizing us together. And I also want to thank my two girlfriends. Um, you're not seeing three strangers uh, up on a stage, strangers to each other. Um, but you're seeing um, three people who are really close friends and we're really different from each other. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show you that um, 
uh, diversity, requisite diversity is uh, an essential element in how we work our lives. And so, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, Joe. <laughs> Mary Catherine. Aww. I have to, Mary Catherine and I, this is awful, I've known each other 40 years. 40 years. I'm jealous. I know. <laughs> well, we'll work it out. We'll work okay. it out, you know. Uh, because Mary Catherine gave us the great mitzvah of uh, adult two, which she's going to be sharing with us. <clears throat> so uh, we have, you know, time for even more. So I want to just say a few things about myself. Um, one of those uh, things is I'm, I'm a Buddhist teacher. It's wonderful to see, to see my friend and student. I gave you Jukai, didn't I, Charles? Oh, good. Uh, you know, you never know. Our relationship also is one of those treasures in my life. So I, I'm a Buddhist teacher, and I've been um, in this world of Buddhism as a kind of Zen failure since uh, 1965, which was um, also those years associated with the civil rights and the anti-war movement. Raise your hand. You've been there, right? Been there and still doing that. And um, that confluence between um, a, a spiritual life and a life of political engagement is something that has uh, informed my, uh, my years. But something else informed my years as well, and that is, and, and I think we're going to touch this more because I, I feel like um, Jane and, and Mary Catherine and I, and I'm sure you and Walter, you really um, touched the, the pulse of that in your introduction. Um, the relationship between suffering and wisdom and the relationship between wisdom and happiness. And we want to kind of unpack that for you because um, there's something important about these three dimensions of um, human experience that is uh, relevant for us to, to unpack. For my own life, I would say um, this became apparent to me when I was very young and I woke up one morning blind. And I was in bed and unable to see for two years. And my parents brought in a caregiver for me. And she was an Afro-American woman um, whose mother had been a slave. And she was wise. She was also happy. Not um, uh, the typical kind of happiness that you think of sort of ha, ha, ha. But she was actually fun, too. Um, but um, she was freer than any person I have known since. And when I got better, which was, um, uh, this happened to me when I was four, so by the time I was eight or nine, I was in, uh, you know, sort of rehabbing in the world. Um, the question for me that really came up as I had discovered I had an interior life, wow. That was really, you know, nothing like a, a good sickness to um, force you down and in, right? Um, the question for me, as I became more socialized, and I haven't completed that socialization process, by the way, um, is what is it to be a wise man or a wise woman? You know, it, it was the question that kind of drove me into the world that Mary Catherine and I share, which is the world of anthropology. It was the question that um, drove me into um, the world of spiritual exploration and psychology. What is it to be wise? Now, today, um, I'm at the Library of Congress as a distinguished visiting scholar in Washington, D.C. And that question for me is even more relevant. 
We have men and women of all ages um, working in our nation's capital, influencing um, the lives and the environment which support our lives of every human being on this earth. And that question which awakened within me as a young person has stayed um, on my heart, you know, as a kind of the, the sort of foam of the wave of life, um, becomes even more important, I feel, to unpack at this time. How do we educate our young so that they open up the portal of wisdom or wisdoms in their lives? Um, how do we foster within um, human beings the actual aspiration to uh, be wise? And, and the question of what is, in fact, wisdom? And this question has been explored from the point of view of neuroscience, social psychology. Stephen Hall has recently written a book about wisdom. Uh, it's a coming thing, David Brooks. Um, is, as you know, if you've read the New York Times or his book on prosociality, this is an issue that is really important today as our planet becomes more imperiled. So uh, my life has been a journey that has uh, uh, had that question, if you will, as sort of the, the priming question. How do we nourish wisdom? And upstream from that, what do we mean by wisdom? What is wisdom? What is it to be a wise man and a wise woman? Are there different kinds of wisdom? Or is there a kind of unifying theme in wisdom? Can wisdom awaken for uh, a young person um, in the same way that wisdom can awaken for a person who is older? And so I'm very excited about today. Um, as most, or not most, many of you know, I have lived inside of a spiritual institution uh, for now uh, 32 years. It's just wonderful being uh, in this uh, opportunity of um, uh, being held by a structure where you are regularly throughout the day turned toward your interior life, where a uh, code of ethics or of precepts uh, invites you to live an awakened life even if you're falling off the wagon all the time, but you're also uh, standing up as frequently as you can uh, from your grave failings and fallings. So, um, that we're together here, that I have friends out there, but also friends here on the stage with me, um, I think is uh, important that we begin today with the deep value and importance of um, relationship, of how we are with and through each other which brings me back to how Lilla was with me when I was so sick as a kid. Yeah, I think that's all I want to say right now, yeah. Walter. Just, you know, opening up some questions just to say thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.